right now, it is my great pleasure to uh, bring to the stage a former ED here at the task force, uh, past executive director and director of gay and immigrant right program at the Haas Junior Fund, the underwriters of today's plenary, and what else? The pizza, thank you. Let's be a little grateful, people. All right, please welcome to the stage, Matt Foreman. You are the Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Evelyn Walter Haas Jr. Fund, it's my honor and privilege today to present the task force's 2014 award for outstanding LGBT leadership and immigration reform. Some of the political, or all of the political discourse around immigration is so ideological and such a jargon that it obscures what this is really all about, and that is people. 11 million Americans who are now forced to live in the shadows of society and subjected to appalling economic exploitation and law enforcement tactics that actually defy words. Among these 11 million are at least 267,000 LGBT people. This is not a statistic. These are our brothers and sisters enough to fill every seat in this ballroom 132 times over again. In recent years, in this long struggle for reform, something extraordinary has happened, and we know a lot about that in the LGBT community. And that is undocumented Americans have risked everything to come out of the shadows and to demand justice. And And as in the LGBT movement, that has changed everything. In fact, over the last 12 months, immigrants and their families and allies have mounted the largest grassroots and grass tops campaign our nation has seen in decades, in hundreds of towns and cities across the country, in thousands of meetings with legislators, in countless large and small ways. This alliance has refused to give up even as two million undocumented Americans have been deported under this administration, more than any all other administrations combined. They have stood firm, kept the line, kept on going. In all of this, there is something we all should take particular pride in, and it's something that a lot of people don't know about, and that is the extraordinary, outsized, enormous role of young, undocumented queer people in this movement. They, they, the undocu-queers, led the trail, trail of Dreams March from Florida to our nation's capital. They forced a congressional vote on the DREAM Act. They have and are leading actions and have put their bodies time and again on the line, risking arrest and being arrested, and all that that entails. Still, getting to meaningful reform is going to be an incredible fight. But the fact that just this week, the House leadership was forced to put forward their framework for reform, as substandard as it is, is due in large part to these create courageous young people. Today, the task force is recognizing a leading group in all of this, the Queer Undocumented Immigrant Project, QUIP, a part of United We Dream. With few, and when I say few, I mean few resources, QUIP has built chapters across the country in places no one would think hospitable to LGBT people generally, let alone undocumented queer people. At every step, it has insisted on our inclusion in the broader movement. It is savvy, smart, and most importantly, effective. Of course, QUIP does not exist apart from its members. 
and we are so honored to have some of those outstanding individuals here with us today. They and their comrades are fierce folks who have been recruiting members, speaking at rallies, working the halls of Congress, raising the voices of LGBTQ immigrants in campaigns for reform, police accountability, and to end employment discrimination. So, on behalf of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, it's my extreme privilege to present the 2014 Award for Outstanding LGBT Leadership in Immigration Reform to QIP, the, the Queer Undocumented Immigration Project. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos Ramos. I'm coming from North Carolina. I'm originally from El Salvador. And I'm part of the Queer Undocumented Immigrant Project. Um, today, we really appreciate this distinction on, on behalf of our queer undocumented immigrant community, a community that is often excluded from these spaces. The Queer Undocumented Immigrant Project began with a vision to identify and address the particular needs of our queer and immigrant community. We are the invisible within the invisible, and QIP has become our form, of, our form of resistance. We hold double coming out forums, fight for the rights of same-sex binational couples, advocate on behalf of transgender and immigrants living with HIV within the immigration detention centers, also petitioned to end the one-year filing deadlines for LGBTQ asylum seekers. But most importantly, we strategize innovative ways to bridge the LGBTQ and immigrant rights movement because immigrant rights are LGBTQ rights and LGBTQ rights are immigrant rights. Muy buenas tardes tengan todos ustedes. Mi nombre es Jocelyn Mendoza. Soy una mujer transgénero indocumentada orgullosa, originalmente de México. Estoy aquí, en, eh, estoy aquí en nombre de todos los 11 millones de indocumentados. Hoy estoy saliendo de una sombra para mí afirmarme ante todos ustedes como una mujer transgénero. Llevo 15 años en este país. Para mí no, se ha, no ha sido fácil sobrevivir. Este, hace años tra trabajé en un restaurante donde comencé mi proceso de transición. Mi cuerpo comenzó a cambiar notablemente con el tratamiento de las hormonas. Un día un compañero de trabajo se dio cuenta de, los, de esos cambios y se lo contó al dueño. El dueño a los dos días habló conmigo y me dijo que tomara un mes de descanso y que, y que él me iba a llamar para que yo regresara. Yo nunca recibí esa llamada y pues me, yo me sentí humillada porque después de, de un año de trabajar duro, me despidieron por solo ser transgénero. Desde entonces he tenido que ocultar mi, mi identidad de género para obtener trabajos, porque no muchos lugares emplean a personas como yo. Finalmente, después de meses, este, encontré otro trabajo y ahí sufrí abusos por causa de mi identidad como inmigrante y documentada. Me hacían trabajar por mucho menos del salario mínimo y terminé por mucho, con muchos problemas de salud a causa de que no tenía días de enfermedad. Como ven, esto es la realidad de una mujer transgénero y documentada, y yo me, me he sentido derrotada e impotente, al no saber cómo defenderme de esos abusos, hasta que final, hace dos años, me hice miembro de Se Hace Camino New York, y, este, y números, este, además he ido numerosas veces a, con la organización a luchar, a luchar contra una reforma migratoria, que incluya a, la, a las personas LGBTQ, con quiz. Gracias. Hi, my name is Jocelyn. 
Mendoza, I am a, um, a proud undocumented transgender woman. I am from Mexico. I am here in front of all of you um, on behalf of the 11 million undocumented who are in the shadow to affirm myself as a transgender woman. I've been in this country 15 years and for me it has been very hard. I have been working, um, I was working in a restaurant and I started my transition. My body began to change and my coworker told, noticed it. My boss then told me to take um, a break of a month and he would call me. I never got that call. Um, I, w I have been humiliated um, in after being in this place for a year. Since then, I have to hide my identity, my gender identity, to be able to find a job because a lot of places don't hire people like me. Finally, after months, I found another job where I was being abused because of my identity as an undocumented immigrant. I used to work long hours for less than minimum wage, and I had a lot of problems of sickness because I didn't have sick um, days. As you see, this is the reality of a transgender undocumented. I felt defeated and impotent to not be able to defend myself from these abuses until I was able to find Make the Road New York, which is a community organization that fights also for immigration reform and LGBTQ rights. And together with QUIB, the Queer Undo Undocumented Immigrant Project, I'm fighting for everyone. As you can see, um, Jocelyn's story only mirrors the many stories that we have of our undocumented queer um, community, right? We need to make sure that we're working together, that we are not further marginalizing our community, and that we educate each other about the struggles, about each other's struggles, and that in finding the solution, we are mindful and inclusive of the people that are affected. Let's work together to end deportation, to end family separation, and to ensure that we are treated with dignity and respect at the detention centers. We must end these acts of violence towards our community. <laughs> Acknowledging that there's still a lot of work to be done, we ask for the support of our queer brothers and sisters. As, grassroots, as a grassroots organization, it is, it is hard for us to continue growing in the 13 states when the lack of funding hinders the opportunities to expand our growth. Solidarity is the key to success in the community. And as of now, I would like to invite you to join us with the words of Asata Shakur, right? As we, as we bring this to an end, so. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and protect each other. We must love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you. Undocumented, unafraid, queer, queer, and unashamed. Undocumented, 